1. Accumulate means to gradually increase over time. 2. Adapt means to change to fit a situation or environment. 3. Determine means to decide. 4. Dilute means to make weaker by mixing with water. 5. Diverse means varied of many kinds. 6. Evaporation means the change from liquid to gas, loss of water to the air. 7. Extreme means very severe or difficult. 8. Fringe means the edge of something. 9. Mechanisms mean methods. 10. Minimize means to reduce to the least possible amount. 11. Moisture means wetness or water. 12. Occupy means to be in a place, exist in. 13. Prolific means producing a lot of something. 14. Resilient means tough able to endure difficult conditions. 15. Sparse means small in numbers or amount. 16. Stressor means something that causes great difficulties. 17. Swing means a sudden or big change. 18. Thrive means to grow well. 19. Transitional means change from one type to another. 20. Violent means strong, sudden, and destructive. Plant life in the Taklimakan Desert. The Taklimakan Desert, second in size only to Africa's Sahara Desert, occupies some 337,600 square kilometers, 130,300 square miles, of northwestern China, an area about the size of Finland. Sparse rainfall, daily temperature swings of up to 20 dec, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and violent sandstorms make it one of the most extreme environments on Earth. 85% of the Taklimakan Desert consists of shifting sand dunes, some up to 250 meters tall, that are largely free of vegetation. Yet transitional areas between the open desert and oases on the desert fringe support diverse plant forms that not only have adapted to the harsh conditions, but actually thrive there. Successful desert plants are resilient to scorching summers and frigged winters, drought, and high salt conditions. The plant's principal defense against these environmental stressors consists of drawing in as much water as possible while minimizing moisture loss. Three Taklamakan plants, Populus euphratica, Tanarix ramosissima, and Alagi sparsifolia, represent some of the most diverse, prolific vegetation in the area. Although they share many survival strategies, each has developed unique coping mechanisms of its own. The Euphrates poplar, Populus euphratica, the only tall tree in the Taklamakan ecosystem, has an extensive root system that allows it to absorb water far from the standing tree. P. euphratica controls evaporation by opening and closing the stomata, or tiny pores, on the leaf surface in response to the amount of moisture being lost through the leaves to the surrounding awe. These stomata generally remain open during the day while the plant conducts photosynthesis. P. Euphralca can endure high salt concentrations in the sodal. It takes in unlimited amounts of salt through the roots, up the stem, and into leaves, where it dilutes the normally toxic salt by increasing the number and volume of its cells. Tanarix ramosina, a small tree with needle-like leaves commonly known as tamarisk or salt cedar, takes in enormous amounts of water via a far-reaching root system, many times the size of the plant above ground. Like P. euphratica, tamarisk can naturally determine when to close stomata to inhibit evaporation and regulate photosynthesis. Tamarisk has a high tolerance for salty conditions and even produces its own salt, which it accumulates in special glands between the leaves and then releases onto leaf surfaces. Leaves dropping to the ground make the soil more saline or salty, giving Tamarisk a competitive advantage over less salt-tolerant plants. Ahaxparsifolia, a spiny shrub, thrives in the Taklimakan Desert, even though it uses large amounts of water, especially during the summer months. With only a few wispy roots in the upper soil, it is unaffected by occasional flooding. 
Most of its roots reach down deep, where they take up water from as far as 16 meters below ground. Unlike P. euphratica and T. ramosissima, which open and close stomata according to conditions on the leaf surface, A. sparsifolia does so according to hydraulic conductance, that is, the ease with which it takes up groundwater. Although desert plants have adapted for their own survival, they also help protect their ecosystem by stabilizing sand dunes, preventing erosion, presenting a barrier to sandstorms, and conserving biodiversity. Writing. Sample response. The charts show information about the size, rainfall, and temperatures of three deserts on three different continents. At 9 million square kilometers in area, the Sahara Desert in Africa is much larger than the other two deserts shown. The Taklimakan, at 270,000 square kilometers, and the Great Basin, at 305,775 square kilometers, are similar to each other in size. The Taklimakan has the sparsest rainfall, with an average of 1 to 3.8 centimeters per year. The three deserts have similar summer temperatures, 30 degrees Celsius in the Sahara and Great Basin deserts, and 25 degrees Celsius in the Taklimakan Desert. However, winters in the Sahara, with an average temperature of 13 degrees Celsius, are much warmer than in the other two deserts, where the average winter temperatures are minus 8 degrees Celsius and minus 9 degrees Celsius. The highest temperatures recorded in the Sahara and Great Basin are almost the same, 57 degrees Celsius and 58 degrees Celsius. The other extreme, the lowest recorded temperature, is not shown for those two deserts, but it is shown for the Taklimakan, minus 26.1 degrees Celsius. Speaking, sample response. Are you interested in visiting extreme environments? such as deserts or high mountains. Why or why not? I don't think I would like to go to the top of a high mountain because I don't like to be cold. And I think climbing high mountains like Mount Everest is dangerous. It might be interesting to visit a desert because I would like to see the different kinds of plants that grow there. I think they would be very unusual and interesting to look at. But I don't like to be too hot either, so I wouldn't want to stay in the desert for a long time. I don't really like extreme environments. I prefer to be comfortable. Why do you think people like to visit extreme environments? I think people like extreme environments for two reasons. One is adventure. Some people like doing unusual or dangerous things. They want to see if they can climb to the top of high mountains or endure extreme hot or cold. They want to prove how strong they are and how much they can endure. The other reason is interest. Some people are interested in studying unusual plants or animals or rocks, different kinds of things, so they have to go to unusual places to find these things. When you travel, do you adapt easily to new climates? I can adapt easily to new climates as long as they aren't extreme. In the wintertime, it's very cold in my city. If I have the opportunity, I like to take a vacation at that time and go to a warm place with a nice beach. I certainly can adapt easily to a warm beach climate, especially when I think about the cold weather I have left behind at home. However, I don't like to go anywhere that's too hot or too cold either. I can't adapt to that 